Hi, uh, I'm an organizer with Safe Landing BTV. We're here today on Tuesday, May 23rd uh, in solidarity with other activists in Geneva, Switzerland. There is a, uh, the largest private jet sales event uh, in Europe uh, happened today and about 100 activists from Stay Grounded, Extinction Rebellion, Scientist Rebellion and Greenpeace uh, protested. Many were arrested. Uh, calling out the uh, wealth inequality and climate injustice of private jets. And so we are here, Safe Landing BTV and a lot of our allies are here today calling for the immediate banning of private jets at Burlington International Airport uh, because, because of the climate crisis. And so that's why we're here today in solidarity with our friends uh, who are opposing the F-35s. Stragano, I'm one of the organizers with Safe Landing BTV and Flight Free Vermont, and I organized with some other climate justice organizations. Thank you so much for being here. We put the word out just nine days ago for a rally on a Tuesday at three, and so uh, the fact that this many people showed up is awesome. So thank you so much for making the effort to be here. I am very grateful. Um, thank you to the, our co-sponsors, so Safe Landing BTV and the Women's International League of for Peace and Freedom, and the Vermont Peace Anti-War Coalition, and Sunrise Chittenden, Flight Free Vermont, Code Pink, Extinction Rebellion Vermont, and the Cancel F-35 Substack Media Company. But basically, I just want to speak about why we're here today, a bit about Safe Landing BTV's history. So we are the group of organizers who, um, this organization was born out of the victory when the airport wanted to expand. 11 acres into the working class Chamberlain neighborhood and we organized and we are victorious and so now we've gone in the offensive um, when, and we have two goals one is no expansion at all of the airport and two is 50% uh, reduction of emissions by 2030 so that is degrowth of the airport that means grounding planes because of the climate emergency um, the reason we are here today on May 23rd on a Tuesday and not on the weekend is this uh, action is in is uh, in solidarity with activists in Geneva Switzerland so today yeah and so if you've seen any of that coverage it's been great so activists from stay grounded extinction rebellion scientist rebellion and Greenpeace about a hundred of them protested it's called eBase EBACE it's the largest private jet sales event in Europe and I don't know how many were arrested, but many were arrested demanding an immediate banning of private jets. And so that's why we're here today in solidarity with our anti-war friends, in solidarity with our friends fighting for climate justice and uh, calling for peace around the world. But today's event is really about banning private jets. There are private jets that fly in and out of the airport every single day. You can actually go to flightaware.com and you can go to Burlington Airport and you can see all of the arrivals and departures that go in and out of the airport every day. And if you click on them, you get the tail number. And that's like the vehicle identification number for a car. Um, and you can see who owns them, right? So a lot of them are owned privately. A lot of them are chartered private jets, right? So a rich person just said, I want to fly to Cleveland or I want to fly to wherever. Um, there's this, uh, there are several other categories of what Stay Grounded calls bullshit flights. Um, so short haul flights, so these are flights like to Plattsburgh or flights to Rutland. Um, there are recreational flights, there are flying clubs where you know, a group of people own an airplane together and they just fly around causing climate pollution and noise pollution for everybody just because they want to see the sunset. Um, there are recreational flights at Vermont Flight Academy called Discovery Flights where you just go up in the air for sunset and like pretend you're a pilot for a while. So all of these are luxury emissions. So we can't have them in 2023. When last week the UN said we're probably gonna hit 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2027. So that's basically right now. So no action at the airport is not an option. We have to take uh, action at the airport and the city of Burlington is not doing it. They're, the plan is literally just endless expansion. So we are here, allies in solidarity, calling for degrowth at the airport, stopping the F-35s, and in particular, the banning of private jets, which is, thank you, thank you, Rob, yeah. Um, and so that's why we're here. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for all of you for, for coming today. 
Um, I'm going to pass to Duncan, who's with the Vermont Peace Anti-War Coalition. Woo! Give it up for Duncan! Woo! Give it up for the flower, baby! Woo! Give it up for the flower! Okay, let's get rid of this, because that's not the message. So, like a true modern activist, I'm going to use my phone. So you can think I'm a young Brianna Joy Gray or something like that. I'm very, very techn tech technocratic, which is what we need to do to survive. So I'm from the uh, Vermont Peace Anti-War Coalition, and we're made up of a bunch of older folks. You know us, and uh, we want some younger folks to join us. But I just wanted to point something out um, and make us aware that there's a cord going in here that's getting all of this speech into that camera so I don't have to face them. Um, so we're all from different groups, and this is what I just wanted to, I wanted to point out we have to learn how to work as a larger movement. Um, and what makes this special today is we're at this airport today. This airport is the symbol of everything that's going on wrong. It's about growth, it's about emissions, it's about killing, it's about nuclear uh, proliferation. It's about everything, and it's right here. So that's why this is a special place right now, this minute, because we're here. But it's not special because of those things. It's special because there are different groups endorsing this action. There are groups that normally just don't show up together. But here we are together because we're facing the same shit. And so I think we need to think Maybe, you know, in a creative sense, what are the messages that are the same? And I can't come up with any, it's a tough one. But what are the messages that are the same uh, of all our groups? Because we're a vast minority, but we're a powerful minority. And, and you know, as the, as the, the two-party system sets up this next charade, um, where they, they uh, bait and switch on us every time, we need to get out of that mindset because we are a force ourselves. And, you know, I've been in these movements for a long time. My mother and, and Robin and you know, all of us um, have been in these movements. And we just continue because it's all the same. It's all the same resistance. It's all the same knowledge. I mean, think of all the knowledge we have studying the F-35. What has the F-35 done? There are people here who can tell you everything about it. You know, what, what do private jets do? There are people who can tell you exactly what's coming out of their engines. You know, there are people here who can tell you all of the facts. So we're a powerful force. And I say let's find a way to merge our messages in a really uh, natural way that we all believe in. What? Sovereign what? Love of the Earth. I, I would, for me, I think love of the Earth is probably the, a primary uh, uh, message that we're here together for that. So, and of course, you see a lot of spiritual people working in, 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 in resistance work because uh, they love humanity. So we're all, we're all here for the same reason. And I, and I really am glad to be working with Dan Castrigano and others here in Extinction Rebellion Vermont. You guys are so awesome, and um, keep up the good work. You're next. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. And thank you, Dan Castrigano, for organizing this. That guy has initiative. And I'm so glad to see that. It's, it's fantastic when we have an organizer among us, a real genuine organizer of the people. So I've prepared a few remarks about this climate emergency and what we can do about it. And I have a, actually come up with a proposal for action. And it's very simple. Abolish all aircraft that averages 
fewer than 50 passenger miles per gallon of jet fuel or gasoline at this city-owned airport. Right into the mic, okay. So, my name is Jimmy Lee, and I'll, I publish a newsletter on Substack called cancelf35.substack.com. Nearly all passenger airliners already far exceed 50 passenger miles per gallon. Some get over 120 passenger miles per gallon. For cargo planes, the standard would have an alternative, obviously. A ton of cargo mile per gallon standard that's equivalent to the 50 passenger per mile standard for passenger planes. In a climate emergency, everyone has a responsibility to act. The earth is in trouble and we're getting all kinds of emergencies from climate. And it's mostly affecting working class people, not just in this country, but around the world. Now, you might worry that uh, if Burlington established a standard, like 50 passenger miles per gallon, the FAA might step in and say, no, you can't do that. But the FAA only has the full authority over aviation safety. The courts have ruled that the FAA can preempt state and local government action in that entire field of aviation safety. But gas-guzzling aircraft has nothing to do with aviation safety. Restricting aircraft based on passenger miles per gallon or tons of cargo miles per gallon is not preempted by any federal law. Burlington is the airport owner. And in that ownership, it has authority to establish standards for the airport. <clears throat> and that was established in a court ruling by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals some years ago. But it, the, there's one condition, and that is that the standard is applied universally for all aircraft. They can't discriminate and single out uh, some to avoid having that standard. An emission standard for Burlington Airport that requires meeting a reasonable passenger miles per gallon or ton of cargo miles per gallon standard can be enacted now by the Burlington City Government. Such a standard would also apply to the F-35, which is the worst of all the gas guzzlers at this airport. It only gets 0 0.5 passenger miles per gallon. That's 100 times worse than the standard I'm proposing. It burns 100 times more fuel than any reasonable standard. It's a gas guzzler on steroids. It burns 22 gallons of jet fuel every minute of flight. It's a climate killer on steroids. It's not protecting us, it's endangering us. 240 years ago, the founders of this country established a system with powers divided between federal and state governments. Vermont did pretty much the same thing. It delegated powers to the local governments to regulate vehicles of every kind to protect public health, safety, welfare, and convenience. That means that the Vermont local governments, the cities, towns, and villages have the power to put a stop to this abuse. The mayor of Burlington, the city council, and the airport administration can take action for the welfare of the people, their constituents, and the entire planet. They have the power to ban any aircraft 
that cannot meet a reasonable emission standard from using this airport, but they're not using that power. A non-discriminatory emissions rule that applies to ban all gas guzzlers is reasonable, sensible, practical, necessary, and legal. One step to prevent needless, outrageous CO2 em emissions and protect the climate. But it's not just Burlington. Citizens of every town in Vermont can take important steps to protect the climate. One of them is to demand, is something we can do, demand that our own local governments, whichever town we live in, and every local government join in adopting an ordinance banning gas guzzling airplanes of every type. Thank you very much. That, so I run a state chapter of Flight Free USA called Flight Free Vermont where people quit flying or take a flight free pledge for one year because of the climate emergency. And just wanna highlight that 1% of people are responsible for 50% of all aviation emissions. And 80% of people on earth have never been and will never be on an airplane because it's too expensive. So it's 80% of 8 billion is 6.4 billion people. So if you are rich enough to fly in the first place and want to extract yourself from the aviation fossil fuel industrial complex, that's what Flight Free is for. It's about storytelling because data and graphs don't always work. So Kurt is um, one of our feature stories at Flight Free VT on Instagram. I quit flying in 2019. Um, I know Robin has pledged to be Flight Free in 2023 and a lot of other Vermonters are saying, we're gonna stop flying because of the climate emergency. And I think that's really important um, because there is data showing about the hypocrite effect so if you go to Safe Landing, BTV, social media, uh, which kind of exploded in the last couple of days, there's a lot of trolls, which means you're winning because you're challenging the status quo. So there's a lot of comments like, bro, you jealous, and look, it's John Kerry flying in a private jet. And there's data showing that if you actually walk the walk, if you quit flying, if you stop eating meat, if you do these personal climate choices, that you are more credible and people look up to you more. So if you pledge to be flight free and you tell your story, that's really, really powerful. That's not gonna solve the climate crisis, but it's an important piece. And so I wanted to highlight that. I'm Jimmy Lease, and I'm here with Safe Skies Burlington and People for Peace and Security. And we've, uh, we've organized this demonstration to call for climate justice, especially with regard to aviation. Aviation accounts for 10% of all of the transportation greenhouse gas emissions. And the F-35 at this airport, the 20 F-35 jets account for at least half of the aviation emissions, or it's, let's put it this way, the F-35 emissions equals all of the emissions of civilian airliner flights put together. <laughs> so what we're saying is abolish the F-35 at Burlington Airport, abolish gas guzzling aircraft here some of the aircraft is abysmal as far as uh passenger miles per gallon and the f-35 is the worst it burns 22 gallons of jet fuel every minute of flight every minute more than a tank of gas for an automobile burned it's burning 1,500 gallons an hour in straight and level flight, much more when it's doing high G maneuvers, taking off and landing. This is something that is damaging to the climate. It's the worst climate killer we've got here in Vermont. And the best way 
for Vermont, the lowest hanging fruit for improving our greenhouse gas emissions is to remove the F-35. It shouldn't be here, it shouldn't be anywhere. And that's just for training. If it was involved in war, it would be much, much worse. Nothing is as bad for the climate as war. We've got to put a stop to this dangerous, horrible war machine that's taken power in the United States. Why are we devoting almost a trillion dollars a year to war? More than the t next 10 nations put together. Huge amount of money wasted on the F-35 and other war machines. And the U.S. with its bases in 80 countries is causing, is causing conflict, overthrowing governments, instigating wars like the war in Ukraine. We've got to put a stop to it. Put a stop to a government that's gone crazy with war. Devote the resources of this country, the brilliant people, the material, the workforce, to build it. My name is David Ross. I volunteered twice, served two tours as a combat medic with the 1st Infantry in Vietnam. I'm against this airplane not only because of the noise pollution it, cr it creates, um, which is damaging to children's hearing, damaging to their cognitive abilities, and there's lots of studies that back this up. The airplane is made out of uh, certain materials that are virtually impossible to extinguish with normal firefighting equipment. They off-gas, uh, going to Mr. Speary, who is one of the people that worked on these projects, the off-gassing is equivalent to nerve gas. So if one of those things goes down around here, a lot of people are going to die. My personal experience with uh, this type of airplane, F-4 Phantoms and 111s and so on, is what their job is. Their job is to slaughter people uh, who largely are pretty much defenseless against such, such huge things. So when I was in Vietnam, um, I saw people burn to death from airstrikes, people blown up, whole villages just leveled, nothing left. Women, children, babies, old men, all just dead, and, and worse than that, the ones that weren't dead, and we just leave them. You'd want to try to work on them, you try to work on them, and, you know, get your get you get yourself together, guy. We got to move on to the next grid. Come on, quit fooling the. They'll take care of their own. Nobody take care of their own. They're done. They're gonna just lay there until they die. So uh, I'm against war generally, and I'm also against war because the wars that we get involved in, they were lied into these things. Look at the history of Vietnam, and look at some of the silky from this. How about heroin addiction? Well. We were forbidden by Congress to be involved in Laos. So we got this opium king named Viang Power who had his own army. And the CIA supplied him with everything. And he, he funded a lot of the uh, CIA stuff by selling uh, opium. And that opium went to Vientiane, the capital, was converted into heroin. That's where all of our GIs got addicted to heroin. Uh, and then the heroin came into the West Coast and then it went across the country. Same thing with cocaine. Cocaine's a byproduct of the CIA's secret wars in Central and South America. So the policies that these airplanes back up, their corrupt policies, were lied into these wars. And then on top of all of it, there's just the human suffering. Final thought before I give up the mic, homelessness. There's a lot of homeless vets. There's a lot of homeless non-vets. There's people... You, I've seen videos where they just drive block after block. People living on the streets, some in a tent, some in a camper, some on the ground without even a ground cloth. This plane, in the end, is going to cost over $1 trillion. You know what? $1 trillion is put every homeless person in a house and feed them. So what the hell are my country's priorities? They're certainly not my priorities. My priorities are for peace and justice. And without uh, justice, there can be no peace. So... Thank you. My name is Megan Emery and I'm a South Burlington City Councilor. I'm here 
On my own behalf, I'm not representing the council. Uh, from the very beginning in 2010, when there was a scoping meeting for the basing of the F-35s, I was alerted by a resident that this was uh, a base that was being considered, and I immediately became involved in this. I, I saw the risks to this community, and to, um, I, I think, you know, not only loss of homes, which then came to pass, but also the political divides that this would cost, and it has. This has divided Chittenden County and potentially beyond Chittenden County, and it continues to create um, real issues for our families here, who, in spite of homes being gone, um, we have households that live under the flight path or adjacent to the airport uh, in order to uh, have their lives disrupted and, and more than disruption. They've lost their neighbors, they've lost their, their peace of mind, and they've lost their peace. Um, they can't go outside when the planes are taking off. Uh, there are parents who have bought expensive headgear for their children uh, for fear of their children, these very <laughs> young people with very small ear canals for fear of them losing their hearing. We have people who have fled from war-torn areas, who have come here as migrants and, and refugees. They live under the flight path. We have veterans with PTSD who live here. We have elderly people who live here who have health issues. And we know that the vibrations from these planes, in addition to the deafening noise, um, exacerbates health issues. We have people who uh, represent the middle class and, and the working class here, and these are protected classes of people according to our United States Air Force. The basing decision included these environmental considerations, which included the economics of, and, and the populations and the homes that could potentially be impacted by the basing. All of that was not only dismissed, it was erased, and we have evidence that it was our senior senator, Senator Patrick Leahy and his office, who were instrumental in fudging the numbers and making this basing come to be. Senator Leahy has done a tremendous job for our state and for our nation. He has been a champion of peace in the world, and I cannot understand how the economic supposed benefits of this basing could trump the peace that has now been lost in his homestead. He's never spoken to the people most affected by this basing about this. And that is simply unacceptable. And I have always been present to hear from the people. I have very limited power. I think we should have done more. I think we could still do more. We need to elect leaders who are willing to, to continue to speak to this issue because until these planes are retired or we have a new, a new flighting mission or a new mission altogether, um, lives here will continue to be hurt uh, by this decision. And so I'm just here to express my support um, and I will always express my support whether on the council or not. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Hi there, my name's Phil Hammerslaw. The F-35. We are all equal under the noise of the F-35. It doesn't matter what class, what color, or anything else. Matter of fact, it doesn't matter whether he's human or not. Animals are affected just as much as we are. The F-35 is a boondoggle. It was created as originally a fighter. If you read Forbes magazine, you'll find that even the generals who helped plan it said it's like driving a Mercedes Benz or a Ferrari one mile to the grocery store. It's a boondoggle. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of energy. But most of all, it's a waste of resources, human resources. We should be making other things. We do not have to always live in fear. And what the F-35 represents, they say protection. It's not just protection. It's a demonstration of our fear of others, of other nations, the haves versus the have-nots. If it's 
one thing we should think about, it's, yes, that jet is here now, but how long will it take for us to put in the energy to get rid of it? And that will only come when we start working totally together. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kurt McCormick, a former member of the, of the House representing the Old North End and downtown Burlington. Um, I came out here today because this is a difficult issue because it's so um, not talked about and um, people f think nothing of flying uh, here and there and everywhere and um, uh, and there are alternatives but we, ne we never talk about them so um, I'm here to point those things out like Amtrak, you take Amtrak, you don't have to, you don't have to fly. Uh, I, I, I've been taking the No Fly Pledge with this organization here for since I first heard about them three or four years ago. I haven't flown since and um, I just take Amtrak. Hi, I'm, I'm Terry Baricious, live in Burlington and I happen to have a job right near the airport here. I work at a test center where uh, nurses, doctors, engineers, people like that have to come and take their tests to get certified or licensed. Uh, so we have all kinds of professions having to test there. And when the F-35s take off, often we have to sort of suspend testing for a bit. We have to, I have to write a document, a uh, case, uh, documenting that there was a noise distraction so severe that uh, it could impact people's competence on the test. Uh, so that's a, a frequent occurrence. It basically makes the business that I work at uh, handicapped because we can't really do the job that we are here in South Burlington to do because of the F-35s. So it really has a direct impact on the business that I work at. Hi there, my name is Caleb Quitner, and um, I'm a little nervous standing up against the aviation industrial complex and the vast power and money that's involved in sustaining it, but fortunately I have a lot of friends and allies here in solidarity to speak out against the neurologically damaging and environmentally polluted flying of military and private jets here in Vermont, uh, otherwise small and little to do state with not a lot going on. Um, but we like it that way. And um, we want to have a peaceful um, state to live in. And what brought me here is a concern about children and the future of our planet and the future of human civilization. The chief of pediatric neurology at UVM a couple weeks ago came out with a statement that the damaging effects of the F-35's engines being so loud, well above legal limits in an urban area, can cause effects comparable to chronic lead exposure in young and adolescent children and adults. So at best, this is about drawing attention to the neglected youth in this state who are being ignored by our politicians in the Burlington municipality who specifically asked for the F-35s to be placed here when they could have been placed somewhere else with a lower population far away from schools and city outside of city limits. Um, and um, it's at worst, at worst, it's, it's, a, it's a racist crime 
that the F-35s are positioned directly over the most ethnically diverse city in Vermont, with being Winooski, because Burlington and Winooski are very special places to a, our state that is the least diverse in the nation. But instead of respecting and caring about our neighbors, who have either immigrated here or lived here for a long time that add diversity and cultural wonder to our neighborhoods, we've chosen to exploit their vulnerabilities and their low income status, as Winooski is a very low income city. So if anyone any of the politicians really care about setting up a safe future and protecting the air and the environment and showing at least a shred of decency towards the young people who are trying to learn and become healthy, full-grown adults to lead the nation, this most powerful nation and the greatest nation on earth into a happy, habitable future. I don't know if that's a complete sentence but the amount of negligence and financial concern being prioritized over the health and minds of developing brains is extremely perverse and confusing. So we can't focus on the confusion. We have to focus on what we know and that's that we care about our families and our communities and that we don't want to damage their hearing and we don't want to cause brain damage that's comparable to chronic lead exposure in the youth in the ethnic communities here or as, as well as any of the communities who don't have an option to just get up and leave when the place they've been living has become uninhabitable and completely well, I think this is an opportunity for hope for all of us to come together and share our thoughts and to learn about how the government and politics work to affect um, the infrastructure of our communities and our society because a lot needs to change and we have the power to do it as America, as United States citizens. And we got to bring ourselves together in love or reason and real concern and just keep thinking because I don't know that much, but I know I'm here for the right reason. Uh, thank you. So last night I watched a news program of the, the G7, which are the big countries, meeting in, at Hiroshima, Japan. And one of the comments was that they're planning for a nuclear war. So that's not related exactly to private jets, at least on some, on some level. But the thing that leads to private jets, that leads to grotesque wealth when other people are struggling, um, are the same types of leaders who meet and, and devise ways to destroy the planet, which is what's happening with climate change, of course. So it's the same issues. And thanks for listening.